Hello and welcome to the Mobius Development Podcast, a game development log of a senior game development project. I'm Casey. I'm Amanda. And I'm Alex. And it's been a very, very long time since we've put an episode of this out, because we put out one in week two, we recorded one in week four that was really bad, and then we missed one last week, and now it's week seven. No, it's week eight. Well, is it, tomorrow or the Monday end of is week, week seven, eight. beginning of week eight. So we've yeah. got tomorrow five week whole eight. weeks tomorrow to recap. Week eight. We're doomed. We're doomed. <laughs> We're totally. We are completely like people, fucked. Like in our that's minds, doomed. It's <laughs> emotionally. Over. No, but that's that's later. We've got five whole weeks of stuff to recap today. Yeah, that's yeah. true. We've got a oh, lot man. to get through. Yeah, it's what true, even it's happens true. like i need some kind of visual aid of like what were we doing five weeks ago last because... time on the mobius development podcast we have we you... didn't Just... have an itch hey, page hey. yet <laughs> no we did it's linked in the description for that episode oh i thought that was the last episode we, so nope, we did have it's an linked page. in that first one too wow yeah we're what, good. Do, you, do you know what version we were on because right uh, now I think, like, we're on point, version 0.9 Point six, point five, something like that. It might have just been the vertical at that point. Oh, I think it was just the vertical. It was just the vertical. Mm. So pre yeah, pre build number alpha build. The vertical is version zero point five because okay. we had our numbering system before that. Okay, all right. Yeah, we've done a lot uh, since that vertical slice release, um, which a lot of it has been focused on polish um, and. Um, consistency of our assets and things like that uh so you can go like we're putting up a new build almost every week on that same itch page um so you dear listener can go check out uh all, all of our of previous versions all one of you well i don't Kate, know if I... you're listening yeah. quick 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 shout out to our one listener in russia according to our analytics <laughs> or our one user somewhere else who's using a vpn mm-hmm. <laughs> like there was um... one in ireland too might also be a vpn <laughs> Everyone wanted to watch Avatar before it came out on Friday on right? US Netflix. I know. And I was like, shit, all right, I waited. Because I'd watched the it recently. The funny thing is it used to be on Netflix, like, a few years ago, and it got yeah. taken off. And no and one, like, back. really acknowledged it, and now it's back, and everyone's like, everyone I is... have to watch it right now. I watched it not too Next long ago. Next year, there will be nothing on Netflix, because all of the contracts will run out, and everything will be on Disney+. Plus. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, no, the Viacom stuff will be. Avatar is going to stay on Netflix. They're getting the live action yeah. reboot. In a, in a good way, I hope. In a good it's, way, I mean, I hope. I'm tentatively it's got, hopeful. It's got the original creators and yeah. the original music composer, which means mm-hmm. at least it'll sound great. Yes. Like Didn't I said, Korra tentatively hopeful, hopeful. Yeah, but I, Korra was divisive for different reasons, and I feel like I don't want to get into that because I haven't watched it. I'm going to watch it after I rewatch Avatar again. So I'm going to get go way up and then go... All right, I'm going to finally form my own opinions about this children's cartoon <laughs> that everyone just seems to either really love or really hate. I it's like it, but I, I definitely cartoons. feel that most people do not like it or have or have chosen not to watch it. I feel called out <laughs> <laughs> for having chosen not to watch it and stuck to that and still have no plans to watch it. Okay. Clock, clock wipe. Twenty minutes later, <laughs> we're back. We're back, we're back in, the room. in the room. We're back in the room. We're recapping. It's been five weeks. It's been. We've had a lot of play testing. We've mm-hmm. had a lot of iterations going in. We've revamped and we've rescoped with a with with two major deadlines in place. So the showcase, which is at the end of this month, or a week, an end of this month in a week. I think it's a June, beginning of June. Yeah, three weeks. Like first week it of is, June. It is yeah. three weeks away. Yeah. Yes. The week before last, week six, was um, our like midterm turn in, mm-hmm. um, which I believe was build version 0.8, if you're yeah, looking at the archives. Because nine. Um, nine came immediately after. Yeah, nine came like three days ago. Yeah. I think that's the same version that we did our like full class playtest with, right? Or was there some minor updates? No, there were some minor in? updates. A few updates between seven and eight. Yeah, okay. seven, seven and had the eight whale had the, eight the smallest window. <laughs> yeah, I thought eight and nine had the smallest window. No, because seven and eight was like we did seven on Tuesday and eight on Friday. Mm, okay. 
whereas we had the whole weekend we just didn't do anything that weekend <laughs> oh yeah that's i was why gone like and paula was gone mentally and um, i was here but didn't want to work by myself right so it was like <laughs> i was just lonely <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say um, about the full class uh, playtest. Um, uh, I was gonna say something about it. It was good. I was. It was good. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was good. Really good. Yeah. Like oh, good feedback. I was just gonna say that that was one of the uh, things that I think is a big one of the things that we should um, hit on in our recap as a quote unquote major event. Um, because what we've been doing in our online Zoom lectures for um, 172, which is, you know, senior game capstone class, is um, mostly the class has been people's games being playtested by professors and TAs and doing live feedback uh, from students, from professors and TAs. Um, so it's a really good opportunity to get a lot of feedback from a lot of people because the way that Zoom works um, as everyone who is listening probably has experienced, you know, there's video and then there's chat. Um, just and then like there's a laggy like screen Twitch. share. And then there's a laggy screen share. But you get a lot of feedback from your peers going on in chat, um, as well as the professor or TA who is currently playing, you know, verbally expressing yeah. their thoughts and feelings. And then there's you do have to You do have to sift um, through the, the memes a little bit to get mm -hmm. the chat feedback, but it is there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and I felt like we got really good feedback on all fronts, and uh, some of the things that I was a little worried about um, in that playtest didn't happen. Like, um, you know, nobody was really, really like, oh man, this is terrible, and mm -hmm. stuff like that, yeah. which is always the fear, playtesting, especially showing in front of a lot of people. I think the um, thing, too, with like, with especially with a, with a puzzle-centered game, is you can get the the general reaction if you get aggravated with a puzzle even in a really good game is going, oh man fuck this sucks this is bad because yeah. i can't do it i think also that's part of why i think um it's very difficult to play test a puzzle game especially yeah. in the way that we've been doing it because i feel like we're gonna get good stuff from tad and um his daughter question mark yeah. playing yes. it uh and recording it because mm -hmm. you can't play a video you can't play a puzzle game live streaming it to like 20 people yeah because you're not work. you're gonna get frustrated like you don't want to be like uh for like three minutes On when you're camera. live streaming yeah. it and you have like a 10 minute timer where it's like i need to get to see the content of this game it's yeah. like that is not the environment that this game is built for um so it's like i feel like the play tests where people have gone away without us being able to intervene and played and it in played a more it. casual sense have been have had better very results good. yeah yeah because the same two play tests that i did here at home um turned out that way a little bit i was there i probably shouldn't have been i think <laughs> what we're learning here is observed play tests work really well for some genres but i think for puzzles you don't want to do an observed play test Mm -hmm. like, yeah. yes you can catch things that aren't reading well because you know what it's supposed to be but because by the nature of a puzzle game people are really looking in at everything and going and like when you come back to them and say how did what did you think the things you notice would be better on the questions they asked like i figured it out but it was it didn't make sense to me is better feedback than you noticing them not notice something right away which is the thing you always notice if you're someone's trying to solve a puzzle that you've already figured out you're just sitting there going, oh, it's right there. The yeah. eye over the door in the forest temple is right there, and you're not <laughs> seeing it. And you're sitting there going... Yeah, because once yeah. you know something like uh, the details of a puzzle game, it can be pretty obvious to you, um, mm -hmm. you know, no matter how it's presented, because you know that, you know, the vending machine lights are telling you what your partner's code is. It's like... Yeah. Once you know it, you're you know. like, oh, got once it. Once you know when it, you don't know yeah. it, you're blind. You can yeah. go in and going with nothing and really really mm -hmm. kick away at it which and is I think the one if you don't of... have that time constraint and that feeling like everyone's watching you you're more willing to like take a second and look around and be like okay what's happening here and just yeah. like stare at it mm -hmm. yeah. that's the other one bummer of the live play test is everyone that would have given us really good feedback was in there in the chat mm -hmm. and has and knows the answers 
knows mm-hmm. yeah. this knows or not maybe not remembers the answers but knows the core like the core yeah. fundamentals we of can't get feedback from them on does this read as a puzzle because they already know it's a puzzle yeah mm-hmm. and they already know how to solve it if they don't know exactly exactly what the answer is but they know how to get it yeah you i think what we bit. got a lot of good feedback for was for what art is not reading consistently and um like what feels out of place in terms of like you look at the game and um so we got a lot of like um feedback on visuals and streamlining the art um which has really helped with polishing in terms of like how the game looks but yeah in terms of like gameplay puzzle solving we did get feedback um i think that's like again it's one of those things that we can't get puzzle solving feedback as well in that short time we can get visual yeah. feedback which was what mm-hmm. we got and it was that there because i think as of the tad play test we did like three days ago there are a few things that like read as out of place and it was those two posters which i believe we've at least one of them is fixed the other signage in the exhibit hall i think probably needs a similar um coat of paint with some lines and whatever the image that's going to be on yeah. it that is on a it lot so of those it reads better as an exhibit that have been discussed are like now in the pipeline um for getting created so it's just a matter of time um and what's really good too is it's it's a little hard to like be distant from it as like the art lead and and stuff like that but it's really good to get outsiders perspective on what's not working in terms of like this doesn't look like what it's supposed to look like or this doesn't feel consistent because when you're really close to it it can be easy to be like yeah everyone's art is really great and it's in the game yeah. and it looks really great and it does but then it could always look better it could always yeah. be more consistent yeah. the, the um, one other thing and i think tad pointed this out as well that doesn't quite sit in the scene is the vending machine everything else feels yeah. like it sits really well on the machine but the mm-hmm. vending machine still looks it's a little more sat i think it's a little more saturated than the rest of the space and i think if it had just like you could see all the snacks in it mm-hmm. i think that, yeah. that's all it needs i think it needs to be softened in terms of color and yeah then... we can definitely do color editing really easily um i think one of the hard things that we've also been addressing with art is the art being made like the art direction has changed a lot so we started with an art direction in mind that didn't really pan out we went in a sort of similar but different direction and as we went in that direction we solidified what we were doing so stuff like the vending machine was one of the first um assets that actually like was in the game and it's already gone through several iterations we've, we've been adjusting our goals uh and part of the reason that we've been doing that is because um if we want the game to look as good as possible we have these assets you know from winter that no longer quite match with our art direction and even if it only takes a few minor edits it's kind of there's kind of friction to get that made and get it to match um Mm -hmm. and and i think i was very like my position hasn't changed but it's like i'd much rather have a polished seven minute experience than an unpolished 15 minute experience especially when now that we know a little bit more how the showcase is going to work a, a polished ex- a, any experience beyond like 10 minutes people aren't gonna see yeah so polish up those first first off loop one takes you like 10 minutes already so mm-hmm. loop two will have some polish and hopefully people will the ideal for the showcase is we have someone play test it or someone play it that knows the answers to loops one and two or <laughs> to loop mm-hmm. one and they spend it all they spend all their time in two mm-hmm. yeah that would be like the dream but would be basically like three became like no one even if we'd gotten three up to the polished level that loops one and two will be at at the end of the quarter no one was going to see it mm-hmm. no one was going to be at like were the showcase in person and someone could sit down and play for 25 minutes i would have thought a little differently i think also if it were in person mm-hmm. multiple other things this quarter would have been significantly different and mm-hmm. we probably would have been able to get a little bit more done people would have pushed for a little bit more done because we were we were, we could have met in person been in a physical space not have been like in a pandemic yeah because there's we've we've had like like i feel like our scope at the beginning of this quarter 
was correct for if this quarter had been a normal quarter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I think there's a lot I think... of lost productivity in people's mental like yeah. state. <laughs> and I think our scope way back at the beginning of the project was an appropriate scope when for a normal pair of quarters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because again, as we've said multiple times when we were like, yeah, this will be a resource for people because how different could our experience possibly be? We jinxed that so hard. I cannot believe, I cannot imagine some <laughs> somehow ha- anyone having an experience in the 170s that's remotely similar to this ever. Maybe... I mean- Maybe if, next year. Yeah, maybe because be fall, weird. people will be doing 170, which I think will be even harder. Than what oh, we're yeah. Doing no, it'll probably be way worse. They won't have teams yet. Yeah. Be like, everybody get a, get assigned to your <laughs> Discord group. Yeah, that'll be a weird And do your mess. block one prototype via Discord. And yeah, you're like, that'll be a what? big old mess. Because at least, like, we had the benefit of, like, most uh, tech jobs that went remote, a pre-existing team that didn't hate each other going remote. Mm-hmm. yeah we were like we to, had like, get we had them. capital in terms of like social like lubricant and i yeah. don't mean alcohol but like <laughs> we knew each other and we were able to casey means alcohol but we <laughs> we knew each other and There's we had various means of communication remotely anyway so it wasn't mm-hmm. like it was a bigger yeah. emotional change than it was like a logistical change for us yeah. which and we'd been helped. working like pseudo remotely for a lot of yeah, things already too because of the strike mm-hmm. so it's different yeah. there i can't imagine how pitching and stuff is gonna work remotely next quarter mm-hmm. it would Me neither. It would be insane. set up your dlsr and record yourself yeah. like standing in, a, <coughs> in your bedroom yeah upside the i can think of a couple upsides to that though because they have alums come and talk about their experiences in that quarter. Mm-hmm. Doing that remotely will be significantly easier for them. Yeah. Yeah. They'll probably be able to get, get like more eight or nine teams. teams to come back and be like, hey, here's the deal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Tap- be like, hey, you're doing this remotely. We did that for yeah. on the opposite end of, yeah. this, of hey, the game. Hey, Nathan, if you're listening, <laughs> I, I have time. <laughs> I'm not doing anything ever. Right, I think that I think that's that's gonna be we, all of us. Yeah, I'd already we, been putting in a few job apps, you know, um, yeah. for games and stuff. I've already got two rejections. It's like I only submitted like five or six applications yeah. over the last few weeks. It's like, okay, well, this is gonna be my life for the next yeah. few months. <laughs> I might as well spend it doing right? something a little more fun. Right, might as well just sitting around and being sad. Might as well tell people what 172 was like in yeah, our wild, wild remotely. year. <laughs> yeah i think too even if even if not we had such a like a unique like leadership scheme that we mm-hmm. that we set up for the 170s that that mm-hmm. would even that would warrant talking about for 10 minutes just that because it was yeah. i think if i was designing a presentation to talk about our experience through this this i would say it was like a success story in delegation yeah right that, i would like, agree our team was good at delegating like everybody was was able to contribute things that they were able to contribute mm-hmm. and we didn't have like one person who was doing all the things or like one person who's like i'm gonna just force my will upon this team yeah <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah for all of the um bumps in the road that i have talked about with the art team um, and all the different working styles, like, you know, the three or four different working styles we have spread out among the art team members. Um, it's like, despite all of that, that tends to take up the forefront of my mind as someone who like worries about that kind of thing a lot. It's like, we have been pretty successful. Like everyone on the art team has um, at least to some extent been able to focus on the things that they're interested in, you know, UI or environments or polishing assets. Um, and I think that everyone's workload has been working for them, especially recently. I've been trying to make sure that people can take a week off from getting new tasks um, if they need to or want to. Um, and so I feel like it's been going pretty OK <laughs> in that sense. Yeah, I think <laughs> I, I, I agree because, again, we a lot of times we talk about kind of like the the challenges and we don't Mm -hmm. we don't spend a lot of time talking about um things that have gone really well 
mm-hmm. and that that even falls into like every time we hear about the art team on this podcast it's usually some <laughs> some mismatch of um of work style and you can like your imagination of an art team meeting is six people sitting silently in a room working differently when in reality every once i want to look in the chat it's like full of memes and (laughs) like it's it's a very lively and engaging place to be and then jay leaves because they can only handle that for about 35 minutes (laughs) and And that's uh, okay i think the memes um... leave with them (laughs) (laughs) i think that um the people who were less present when i wanted them to be more present back in the day when we were like in In person, person you know people who have because we have a couple people who have lower social energies and can't do the sustained like really long jam times i think that used to be more frustrating to me because that was where i was more productive um and i think i have been put in a position where i'm a lot more like i can relate more now that like you can only handle so much at a time yeah um and sometimes you need time to work by yourself um so I think I've become more understanding of those work styles, and I think that's helped um, in in this process. But yeah, but Casey is totally right. Like I know I'm I'm very much like a worrier, and I'm often talking about the things that are like worrying me. But everyone is working really hard and wants to be working, and um, when they can't, you know, we know that we give them time, and it's it's good. And everyone is great. Everyone is friends. It, I'm. I'm yeah. trying to think of all the positive things. Yeah. No, yeah. People don't want to, well, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up. People don't want to listen to the positives. They're here for the drama. We all know that. Oh, okay. I won't say positive things. <laughs> no, 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 but no, no. Because I think a lot of it too is like when you're put in a position where you like, it's like, like back then, I'm, I'm weird in that I, what drains my social battery is weird and inconsistent and I don't know what it is. Because I get a lot of energy working in jams with people in person, but I've also gotten a lot of that energy in jams working over Zoom. Now it has the amount, the the speed at which it drains is different on Zoom mm-hmm. as compared to real life. Real life, we've had the programming jams that were like eight hours long and we were dead, but we were still kind of having fun. And then we felt that same way after three and a half hours when we're on Zoom. So the weight is different. But then some people, like I think, I think Jay is probably the best example on the team. Their social battery drains a lot slower online. Mm -hmm. They're a lot more engaged and they're a lot more willing to stick around and like grill you or throw a meme out there when they're not like, when they don't have to be like present in the room. Mm -hmm. They just have to be online when they, when you have that freedom to like mute for two minutes and take a breath and then, come back in you can't do that in yeah uh, a real world setting and for me personally if i wasn't like happened upon like a leadership position i think that i would be much closer to the type of person who just like dips in gets my tasks goes off on my own does those tasks and then uh, but i think i've been sort of like forced or like thrusted into uh, being a type of person who gets gets energy from uh these sort of like work together yeah thank god because there are like eight problems i wouldn't have been able to solve if you didn't help me with them (laughs) there's a reason one of my jackbox names yesterday was discount alex (laughs) oh no (laughs) rip (laughs) well that's also because the jackbox party game uh defined casey as the tall um (laughs) what was was it i forget oh shit you can buy t-shirts with it on it. Mm-hmm. There was but... a second adjective, and they both actually described Alex. Yeah. That was the... Yeah, it was. I played... I played... played it. Didn't... Was that the one with the library roles, where where Kelly ended up the guy in the... The guy watching porn in public? I think it was. I think we played that game twice, though, so I don't yeah, remember we which round was what. I believe yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, another thing I just wanted to say about like being the art lead and trying to be positive is it's a lot harder to be positive when you're so close to like to it because I'm constantly thinking about what needs to get done, what haven't we done yet, and like what are the current tasks and how is everyone's workload and can I ask people to do more and 
can I not? And what do I need to do if people aren't doing more? And then it's very easy for me to feel overwhelmed and not focus on the positive stuff. Yeah. And so, I think that's again, why we would, think, if we were to say anything would be the success story and delegation mm-hmm. is that we don't have one leader who is, I will do, I, who carries all of those things you were just talking about by themselves. Mm-hmm. Some teams are doing that. I don't know how. <laughs> yeah. If I was doing that for like art and narrative, for example, I would be totally dead all the time and really yeah. sad. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it's, it's interesting because we've, again, there are a lot of teams that have spread that load between two people, but even mm-hmm. that, like you start to see cracks, mm-hmm. but only sometimes because there are some teams that are doing that that are doing A-OK, Heart of Enya being one of them, I think. Yeah. I don't know what their internal... It seems yeah, maybe, from maybe Twitter, it's their just, internal uh, environment <laughs> is real aces. So Gigi, yeah. Gigi and Tino are very, um, very conscious of mm-hmm. the um, uh, accessibility and the emotional effects of development, and very much on the the human side of development. So they ve- they 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 lean very much into it. So I think a work environment that they lead is very welcoming and encouraging, and yeah, like. They also had a lot of social capital, which allowed them to get a yeah. lot of interest, which allowed them to have a lot of options when yeah, picking so their people. Yeah, they could form a really good So they had, like, team. a really good head start of, like, they only have the best, most motivated people on their team because it yeah. was, like, this is the, these them. are, like, two super highly motivated people with, like, very um, charismatic personalities who are, like, we're making this game. And it's going to be great. And so... yeah. It's the same weight that Kangarumble had. Yeah, yeah. Because Terry went up there, and like, everybody knows Terry. Everybody loves Terry. <laughs> and you go up there and, like, yes, I su- I'm, I'm down. Yeah. I, I mean, that's that's where I would have gone had um had uh, had this uh, crap, had the our tiny little bit of social capital that we got to keep all of our friends hadn't, <laughs> hadn't uh, worked out for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same. I think the like the social capital that we have to make a game with our friends is very different from the social capital to draw a lot of interest in which you can find people that have the same work style. Um, yeah. One thing that we talked a lot about at the beginning of the year in the pitching and like team choosing process and like teamwork portion of the class was like, how do you work together? And um, it's important to find people that work in similar ways because if you're trying to get two really disparate work styles to work together it causes a lot of frustration and friction um and so it's like even though everyone on our team is friends um and uh like we can work together and we do pretty well um you know i feel especially as the art lead i've found that 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 frustration of, of people who work on different like work styles um not meshing together as well as you know everyone who works in the same method um i don't know just something to like think about it's interesting because of the way that the pitch and team formation process works um a lot of it is kind of like how charismatic are you and how well can you communicate your game and a pitch and yeah um how many people do you have to choose from that you know you can work with um slash uh think you can work with yeah Um, the the way the pitching process works is the only reason i'm on the leadership core of this team (laughs) (laughs) like like straight up because we were not as close friends as we are now six months ago or whatever Mm -hmm. so it was literally i i am loud i i can project well without a microphone i can be i can put on a face to be enthusiastic for about 10 minutes (laughs) and when i'm when i'm like not uh, Mm and when i'm in a in front of people and Mm -hmm. i can i can make i can sell it and that was the only reason that i did that and then in building the pitch we realized keeping this three-man team it's probably a good thing if this all pans out so that's me me finally after all these years my naturally (laughs) loud voice and ability to fake enthusiasm and a want for other people to interact with me for about 10 minutes <laughs> on stage has finally come in handy. 
<laughs> yeah, I wonder how much this pitch process that we went through for the 170 series mirrors the real world, quote unquote, real world pitch process. Like, I feel like even if it's not ideal, it is pretty realistic. Um, yeah, because I think if that's you're... what they're going for is they want mm-hmm. at least the, in- maybe less the pitching, but at least the interviewing to be yeah. Yeah. I think the more biggest realistic. difference is that if you're pitching a game to get funding you're usually you're a team that has been around already already mm-hmm. like yeah. more than a year this, these same people yeah you're have not come up with an idea form, and they're pitching this yeah you're not pitching to form a team. yeah that's the I types the of teams that are pitching to get funding are usually not the types of teams who have been together for two weeks <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i think but yeah i think the interview process is similar but i feel as like similar there's as higher, it can be there's higher demands for those types of jobs like if we were a company that had money and we were hiring someone we would have a lot more choice just because yeah. and we would, i think we would have been even a little bit more critical because i think there were things that happen in professional interviews that we wouldn't that we couldn't do because i think in a in a perfect world where we were pitching if we were pitching and someone was applying for a programming role like we didn't do any like programming knowledge checks at all yeah. yeah. So we could have had someone with nothing apply for a programming role, and we'd like them, and we'd take them, but we wouldn't have gotten. I think the unique thing is we didn't really have anyone apply for a programming role, so we yeah. didn't yeah. come up with those knowledge checks. We didn't do your like, can you do X Y Z? Can you efficiently do this sort or stuff like that? Mm-hmm. Which yeah, because it's much harder to have a portfolio if someone is coming in as a programmer. It's like you could yeah. see, you could show them the things that you've programmed but you don't know how that was accomplished really yeah um Mm -hmm. so you kind of need those little tests that everyone hates where it's like hey can you do this answer these python questions and write a program that does x and then you're usually like no no i can't do that uh, how how long do i have yeah because it's it's what gets me about those is that it's entirely it's time pressure and i'm like i don't remember yeah like i could like because a lot of it too is i think in entry level you can go you can go in with the amount of experience that you paula and i have and be like they'll train you Mm -hmm. and you'll get you'll get a lot better in those first two weeks than you did in the last four years just by virtue of kind of how it works because then once you're once you're in on a job role you know exactly what language you're working in you know exactly kind of what your your um your framework is your style guide to follow is so instead of going like here where it's like well i need to know a little bit of java i need to do a little bit of c sharp a little bit of c plus plus a little bit of python i need to know a little bit of all these languages because i don't know which one i'm going to do once you get one and you say everything we do in this project is python and that's what you're going to do for like four years great aces you're going to get real good at python and then your resume can say real good at python experience (laughs) in every other language Mm-hmm. and in our case it would be if we decide to develop another game it would be we could say real good at c sharp experience in the other languages and that's i think the key is if you have a, is to find some projects as a programmer that you want to work on that allow you to spend a lot of time on one language and get yeah. really good at that one language I because think then that, that's your selling point i think that if we were uh doing a second game we wouldn't want to bring on any new people no we would not from outside of our existing group um no because it would be there that would be wholly different yeah in the way it works because i there's no way we we might contract someone (laughs) like we wanted music yeah there's no way we can convince anybody to come on for free yeah i see all the posts on r slash game dev of people being like hey i'm a upstart gamer boy and i need three people to help me make this game idea and it's like no no (laughs) are you gonna pay me you gonna give me money if you give me money i'll program your your horse shit idea for you but (laughs) like i'm not gonna do it for free there was one um to this morning that really uh grinded a lot of people's gears oh really Uh, so it got a lot of like negative response but it was just the same like thing as every every other ones but it specifically called for i would like three unpopular game developers 
And when asked, why do you need specifically unpopular ones? It was like, because they are less likely to need money. <laughs> oh my god! What? And it he was, was like, that overt about it? And oh it was like, man, downvote city! It was like, sir, I understand the sentiment, but do not start your application process With by insulting the applicants. So by insulting the applicants and being abundantly clear that you're not going to give them any money. Only apply if you are broke and everyone hates you. Yeah. Only, Continue. Like, <laughs> my thing is, I wouldn't, like, that's not the realm I would go to to try and get people that are more willing to work for free. Because, like, right. if you're broke and everyone hates you, it means you're probably a dick. Yeah. Like, I was like, top comment was, uh, try next time asking for inexperienced game developers rather yeah. than unpopular game developers. developers. <laughs> yeah. Well... Well played. I imagine the the meme comments on that were were, yeah, were, were it was chef's a, it was kiss. a time. I like uh, going through game dev declassified though, um, and looking at the job postings. I might put myself on there soon. <laughs> like, I need something, please. Yes, full time paid. Ten years of Unity experience plus help. <laughs> I got a lot of Unity experience. I got a lot of Unity experience and nothing else. Yeah, I got, no- but I got this. Mm-hmm. Hey, wait for the Hearthstone rolls to open up. They always ask for Unity experience. Mm-hmm. Unity and experience a, and the love of Hearthstone. I and a custom card. They usually ask for a custom card, too. Mm. That's what I like mm. about that particular app is they're like... But you need Regis to give us... never puts my custom cards in the video. Well, one <laughs> as soon as he does, that's the custom card that you... That's the, that's how I know it's got I the have, chef's kiss approval of Regis I have Kilvin. A full, I have a full <laughs> suite of priest cards that I sent with the last Hearthstone app that I gave and was denied because it was an internship and those are incredibly popular. We're back in the room. and uh... Yes, so our next game is going to be a gotcha game. It's going to be on mobile. <laughs> no! Not make it a gotcha only. game! No! no! <laughs> how are you... I'm not... How... Okay, it's I a combination know. of cookie clicker and a gotcha game. <laughs> how are we going to... But we're not... How, how are we going to not monetize it? Now we monetize the heck out of it. We're monetizing the heck out of it? Okay. We're an, indi- <laughs> we're an independent company we called have Indie to mon- Boids. We Indie need a, Boids. We need Collect a go- all the geometric boids. <laughs> we need a gotcha game so that we can fund the games we actually want to make. <laughs> That's sad. Yeah, first game, get you on the get you on people's radar with some cool indie indie junk. Game then make two a gotcha game. Is either a unsuccessful Kickstarter where we keep the money or a gotcha game. <laughs> <laughs> Game number three is our passions. It takes, I don't want to do an unsuccessful keep... Kickstarter where we keep the money. That's so depressing. <laughs> but what we need the money. <laughs> but that's so depressing. We live with our parents. That's we can, we we can live on a shoestring budget. Need the money. <laughs> yeah, we don't. We don't really need the money. We, yeah, we have we can... free free Unity licenses. Yeah. <laughs> As soon as we go up above that, we don't have those free Unity licenses As soon anymore. as we get right. get dark mode, yeah. after we make our first $100,000, we get dark mode. And yeah, then, then we're 100000 <laughs> God, it feels like, a, like an Animal Crossing like debt, right? where it's like you got to get $100,000 to get dark mode. Right. It, sounds, it seems like an unfeasible amount of money for, <laughs> for, for our project that we made. Yeah. I mean, it could happen. It could happen. It probably it won't, but it could. It'll happen when we've, like, been working for 20 years and we're like, let's come back and do one. So if we make a game, this is kind of a tangent. If we make our second game, we post it on Steam, we get, like, 50%, I think, right? Like, 40% of sales money goes to us. Something like that, yeah. Because, like, 60% of it goes to Steam um, for hosting and stuff. I don't know. What's the cut on Itch? Do you know? I don't know what the cut on Itch is. I think Never it's less. Sold anything on itch, but we could look into it. Yeah, I assume it's. I would assume it's more on itch, like the, the the cut. I would think so we could too. Also, what I've been thinking is we could make free games and try to have a Patreon. Because mm-hmm. I yeah. like free games. Like I feel like if you make a piece of digital content, everyone should be able to play it. Like, yeah, I like there's that no as well. physical barrier preventing people from playing it why not like just well the physical bar- barrier it. is owning a piece of equipment that allows you to play digital things mm-hmm. yeah but like in this environment in this modern environment if you have a computer you should be able to play our game right? yeah, there shouldn't think... be like an arbitrary barrier mm-hmm. I, I think pref- the fun of having a patreon too by the way uh is 
like process content like i know a lot of people are interested in process yeah yeah, yeah. I but think, honestly like i don't know yeah, i think patreon free games based with a game patreon company is a way to do <laughs> i think at least like as as a start to do mm-hmm. smaller scope free games with a mm-hmm. patreon is better than to then to like slowly build up funding to do a big project that is released for like 15 bucks yeah seems reasonable. i know we're like not you gonna say, you mm. explicitly say that on the patreon too that your patron dollars go to will are going into a fund to develop a game that will eventually release for a price tag i yeah. imagine if there's a price tag it would be reduced for patrons it's it like you've be been supporting patrons, us yeah. all along the way it's either yeah. free or yeah, I would probably be free for, for pa- free or like ninety nine cents for patrons, and then fifteen bucks yeah. for everyone else. I think if you're if you've been a patron, like here's the key, you mm-hmm. know, like yeah. don't, yeah. don't even one of the one worry. of the one of the tier rewards, like a like the ten dollar tier or something, would get you. Yeah. What, like whatever you've... whatever dollar tier is the price of the game, mm-hmm. or would like, <laughs> I would. Can you on Patreon like check how many how many how much money someone's given you over? I think so. I think that would be social the way media to do it, tells me that that can happen. Yeah, is that like, if you donated of, like, more than the price of the game, you just you get, get the it game. for free. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. That'd be the way to do it because then you could have someone who's like, I can't afford a fifty dollar a month tier to be the one that gets the game, but I can't afford like a five dollar a month or a ten dollar a month tier. Mm-hmm. If they support you for five months, they've also given you fifty dollars. They should probably also be able to get the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing that we make as a company is going to be a $50 release. No. No. Tri- <laughs> indie I don't even know, 15 seems indie like games. it's pushing it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe 5, 4.99. 4.99. Yeah, depends on our production schedule. Yeah. Like if we're if we're spending a year on every game, I think that that's a $15 game. Yeah. <laughs> if we're doing yeah, like 4 sense. months, I think 4.99. But Yeah. A year, that's four three sets of 4 months, so $15. Mm-hmm. There you go. But, yeah. All right. But yeah. I don't know. All right, moving Do you think on. we should turn donations what? on after after the showcase on itch? Because I have it set to no payments, but we could turn on optional donations. <laughs> I suppose I we know. could do that. We'd have to think I don't, about... don't want to set it at a price, but I was thinking mm-hmm. like yeah, because my thing is just like how do we logistics? How do we distribute that money? Yeah, we have to go. What we have to I think be very much about it. like if we put any of this out for money where does that money go are we mm-hmm. saying yeah. that every time we get some amount of money from itch that divides between the eight the nine of us or are we going to say that any money we get goes back into something that we make yeah that's why i think maybe what we should do is we make mobius we finish it it's done and then we form an independent company possibly called indie boids i think we want to settle on that if we're releasing mobius under indie boids we probably want to keep that name yeah keep that name and then whoever is still with us at that point and we make a second game then, then we can we talk about money do we do donations how does that get distributed yeah. stuff like that i think that. as a student game i don't want to like try and figure out how yeah because we're only going to make like money. 50 cents anyway like it's not worth the social friction yeah for, like, trying to break trying what are to we going to do yeah yeah what are we going to do with this like two dollars or whatever yeah so yeah i think that's a good i, think that's I mean a good point. i don't mm-hmm. think anyone on the team would be like i'm gonna quit and burn all these bridges for my share of two dollars <laughs> yeah but i don't want to like ha- yeah, I don't it's like un- it's to... unnecessary like friction yeah mm-hmm. i don't want to have to deal with that but speaking of finishing mobius yeah yes. let us move on to yeah did we move actually on. bring up how we're rescoping for the showcase I think, think we need to lay we it out. Going to, but I think yeah, let's lay it out. it out yet. Let's lay out our schedule for the next like bit, and then we can really. We've talked a lot about like actually what went into rescoping, mm-hmm. of like yeah. understanding like what things, what tasks that we have left. We have three weeks left before the showcase. What tasks left provide the highest impact with the lowest amount of effort? Mm-hmm. What are what are quick wins? Yes. Yeah, and that's a lot of <laughs> that's a lot of juice, polish, and fine tuning of like um, interactions in the game and puzzles and things like that. Writing additional um, dialogue. Yeah. Writing and so, implementing additional dialogue. The 
main thing that we've decided to do is we had three loops, quote unquote loops, um, basically levels in the game um, that uh, take you from the beginning of the narrative to the end of the narrative. And for the showcase, we've decided we are not going to implement the or focus on the third loop, the third level. Um, and instead, that will be something that we do afterwards with whoever on the team wants to continue into the summer. Um, so for the showcase, we will only have the first two levels of the game. It's going to be four puzzles. It's going to have a lot of narrative. It's going to be really pretty. It's going to have a lot of interactive juice. It enabled me to spend a whole weekend animating a journal that opens and closes, yeah. um, which is now my absolute favorite thing I've done for the game. You know, um, that journal looks, that's better than the journal has looked in ever. It's so good. <laughs> I'm so happy. Nice. Uh, it yeah, does I'm sure Marcelo more. will appreciate it when we I'm show it to you. I'm so yeah. excited oh, right, to show Marcelo. Seen it yet. <laughs> so excited to show Marcelo. Oh, it does need a little more work, but yeah. everything in the game does. That's yeah, just I think Tad's comment about like, I liked the idea of the color sticking out when it was closed. I like it less now that they all read as things you can interact with. Yeah, I think that yeah. that's the main thing that needs to be edited on it is the mm -hmm. colors sticking out. Which is an but, easy thing to edit. Yeah. Um, but those are the types of things that we're <laughs> going to be looking at doing, yeah. really. So low effort, low effort as defined as takes a couple days at most to high impact. There are still a few major tasks left. Mm -hmm. The prism mm -hmm. and the monochromatic room in terms of their implementations are the only major tasks high effort high impact tasks that we want to implement yeah and we have three weeks we have three left. weeks redevelopment and weeks. they're pretty they're pretty good right now in mm -hmm. terms of like functionality yeah I think prisms needs maybe two more two more programmer jams you're doing all the typing now instead of me mm -hmm. <laughs> so we've moved that around a little bit and then i think it'll be pretty good to assemble and slap on into the world monochromatic room i believe its functionality exists it just needs to be put together yeah it needs to be put together we have i've seen assets question mark we've got about uh 50 of the assets for the monochromatic room um still getting there that's one of the um puzzles that has taken the longest time to get assets for um and i think a lot of that has been on people's workloads like trying to balance people's workloads and how long they need to complete tasks yeah. within was, this global pandemic. Yeah, it was interesting <laughs> with the prism puzzle because I was like working with my my temp stuff for a while, mm -hmm. and we were like, yeah, maybe we'll get a couple from Jay today. And then Jay shows up, and they're like, excuse me, what? And they dump <laughs> every asset on me right away. And I'm that like, that is yes. an interesting thing with how Jay works. Is Jay works in like like batches like yeah. that. Yeah, they'll do big um, batch loads. And Robin then told us about it in our first, <laughs> uh, one of our first lectures about mm -hmm. how some people are sprinters and some people are marathon. And mm -hmm. some people work slowly but consistently and other people will just throw a bunch of high high quality stuff at you in a weekend and mm -hmm. then sort and of like, turn wow, off Jay, for a little well bit. Done. Yeah, and I that, think that seemingly is... works really well for them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's awesome, but it is, I think, one of the key differences between uh, like different parts of the art team is that like sprint method versus marathon method yeah. because I'm very much in the other camp where I chip away at things for a while. Yeah. Sometimes mm -hmm. I spend a whole weekend and I animate a journal and I'm really happy yeah. with it. It's, it's interesting but... <laughs> too because like that same sprint thing with Jay is it's like, Jay, can I get these like two changes? And you'll get them in like a minute. You'll ask for a little tweak and you'll get it in a minute. Like I was mm -hmm. like, I think we're going to need all of them with color. And 10 minutes later, I had every single one. <laughs> with with like not just like color swap but good well thought out color mm -hmm. and i'm like yes good mm -hmm. stuff but i think the other big commitment that came out of this rescoping was deciding that on the entry to loop three we would commit to a release window so instead of like going we'll finish it in the summer and leaving that open we'll say we'll finish it in the summer and it will be done by this point so that we do not so that we have an imposed deadline and we don't go like like trickle in and go man we'll finish it in september and then we don't we go man we'll finish it in october and we don't and it just kind of dies because mm -hmm. we've we've decided to say and i think that's probably the the way to do any project not just this one but to go mm -hmm. this is our release window this is a publicly committed to we didn't say internally we said august 2020 we will release the full experience and any pushback on that that we have we have to 
amend all the things that said August 2020. So we say August 2020, and if stuff comes up, we say due to X, September 2020. We can't mm-hmm. just like meh and push and not acknowledge that. So I think mm-hmm. acknowledging a public release date, which is the thing that like you have to do to like accept pre-orders usually, is yeah. a good thing because it commits you to saying especially when you're like not in a company where those corporate deadlines will commit to you anyway and those corporate deadlines i like a little bit less because they make some games not as good i can think of a game that i've played a lot of in the last um last uh, few months where if its original incarnation had had maybe four or five more months of development time would have been a hell of a lot better but i don't want to i don't want to say anything else about that because i I am i am having fun Playing. yeah and i think that like for the team like mentally and just like motivation wise it'll be good to be able to say this is finished there will be no version 1.7 or whatever we're on like this is the final version we're not going to touch it anymore we're going to make something new now mm-hmm. like, i think there will be think, a lot of value in that yeah i think I think it will be I think what I want to say for our version number is I want to release 1.0 as the showcase build yes I agree with and that and then 2.0 is the official release build hmm. in August that seems rather than fair like, to me rather than like of... a final build being like 1.14 <laughs> assuming we do a build a week for two months that would be yeah. way longer than two months but like one. I think if we don't six, have a QA team anymore we probably won't be doing as frequent builds as frequent builds anymore but yeah we'd be doing passive builds for play testing Mm -hmm. and that's the other big thing about going full indie is not having qa Mm -hmm. yeah but it's like we are we have to to, to go out into the world of like reddit and find well no qa people i think qa i think is more kind of i think kind of what we would use like early access for Mm -hmm. steam early access for wide beta i think would be the way to go yeah i don't like steam as a platform i don't don't know if i would want us to be published on steam like unless we were already successful on another platform yeah i think like i feel like steam yeah you have to be an established company before it's worth your time to publish on steam i think and i think qa specifically is something that we can do internally because it's not about playing and like critiquing it's like playing and finding all the bugs yeah, it's not even playing it's like click everything yeah no, try I can, everything yeah it's Cal, like we can Cal yeah. Fuller, you Cal know fullerton's fall semester is uh still online so i can just poke my ceiling with a big stick and go play this build and then my brother will find <laughs> all my bugs for me yeah i bet so, my brother would also uh be down yeah, to yeah, find yeah, some we, bugs <laughs> realize now you, we <laughs> not live that we can QA pay them. my brother loves playing playing video games so i'll just like mm-hmm. play my build for 30 minutes and wreck right. it and then tell me how you wrecked it <laughs> my brother was telling me how he has a um because on steam you could look at your dollars per hour spent on games on mm-hmm. steam and he spends approximately ten dollars per hour oh, of God. game play on steam and he was make he's making like minimum wage so it's like <laughs> he's spending almost as much per as hour of playing a game as he is per hour of doing yeah, his no, job I've, at, like, I've um i've i don't know what like my because if i look at like my world of warcraft ratios i think usually i play enough to where i'm like i'm down to like 10 cents per day or something to where yeah, it's like i play I, enough in a day to warrant the fifteen dollar price tag on the months where mm-hmm. I can't make enough gold to buy my month with gold, so that's 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 the life to live. That's priorities with my money. Like I could, yeah, I believe it. I could see one movie that may or may not be good, or I could play video games for like fifty hours. <laughs> I think that's a good like use of that fifteen dollars. Mm-hmm. yeah like i'm the type of person who is willing to buy or like rent a pay-per-view movie <laughs> to, just to watch it for the convenience so i am i I'm, usually do that if it's like under five bucks i wouldn't go over yeah five bucks. like a youtube like movie thing where you can get yeah, you buy you it, it for like 499 yeah 499 yeah like that's but i think like compared to that 15 dollars for the amount of world of warcraft i played this month is like <laughs> it's a like as for a live service it's a good a good i much prefer yeah. that 
like live service model of yesteryear to the live service mm-hmm. model we have now. I much prefer. Yeah. I will give you fifteen dollars up front, and I get all the content for that month, rather than I have to play X amount of time to fill my battle pass to get X content, or I have to give you more money. Like, yes, I get the gameplay for free, but I don't get like the new content. Yeah. Like fifteen dollars. I mean, we a could month. have an entire separate podcast, and I don't mean podcast <laughs> episode. I mean separate podcast, podcast where we talk every week about how world of warcraft is descending into a mobile game (laughs) but (laughs) i will cut out the last 20 minutes and i'll post it as its own as its um, own thing blizzard Uh, hot take podcast (laughs) no we can't do that i might still want to work there okay i'll cut it out and then once you get a job i'll post all the backlog (laughs) of cut uh blizzard hot takes of like everything i thought before what I wanted to say about committing to a deadline is I found that really useful in my personal life with my personal projects. Like there's been multiple years where I've done National Novel Writing Month and Inktober and just having an external deadline, even if it's self-imposed for me is really useful because um, there is a solid end goal. There's a solid like, you know, it'll be over when October is over, basically yeah. for, you know, one example. Um and I think the fact that we've already been working on Mobius for so long, it's it's easy to start feeling like I'm ready to be done with this project, especially when me personally, I'm, I keep having to go back and work on the vending machine, for yeah. example. It's like it, it, it's valuable work. It's valuable for the game. But the idea of redoing the vending machine or Again. even just having to go back and tweak it like fourth time is um a drag and i'm more excited to work on you know animating the journal or something else like that even if it's in the game it's new things to be working on um yeah, that's i think a big so, thing that marcello said too was mm-hmm. find your tasks of you have the drag that you're gonna have to do that's inevitable it's like mm-hmm. we're gonna have to redo that vending machine again but have your have your like spreadsheet where it's like you've got your you've organized entirely through a check uh, like a plus minus system of smiley face emoji and poop emoji to use his example i think was what he Mm -hmm. did so do like for the smiley face tasks you get your energy up and then you got to do the poop task yeah exactly but i think that applies um to the game as a whole as well like when you've been working on a game that was supposed to be a six month game for eight months, you know, the whole thing starts to become like, okay, I'm ready for the next thing. Um, yeah. And so I'm glad that we'll have a, a solid release date, even if it's a self imposed one, um, you know, even if it gets, you know, pushed back or pushed up. Uh, I think that just having like a, okay, we'll be done with Mobius in August is, is a really motivating like sentiment. Yeah. And, At least yeah. to me and my personality, and I know me and Casey yeah. have similar like work styles uh-huh. and personalities. Yeah, it's the same so. thing. And a, a lot of it is like the 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 idea that like if that extra two months goes well, it's the idea that like there will be it being done in August means getting started on something fresh mm-hmm. in September. Mm-hmm. It means it's not yeah. it doesn't mean being done and then I go to literally sitting in a dark cave playing World of Warcraft and sending out job apps until I'm I mean, maybe for a week or two, but like I could do that for a week or two. That's fine. Yeah. (laughs) But like knowing that there will be something else to work on that I can put out that I'll be proud that I worked on, instead of just like letting my portfolio go stagnant while I wait because I don't have the jack of all trades talent to develop a game by myself. (laughs) Um. Yeah, I think um, what we should do as a team building exercise after the showcase after we release versions of your uh, 1.0 we should uh not everybody because i don't think everybody will want to even within the people who are staying but some of us probably the three of us i feel like would be on board should do a like one week game jam just to like refresh ourselves make something new like just get a get a quick easy portfolio piece in yeah get a quick win just be like hey we made it we made a game in a week it's yeah. done and we can do that in like that interim we could do that in, in that interim in june where we're saying we're not going to do any yeah that's what i was major thinking. work we just do it some week in june we do a week-long jam on something else 
and then we put mm-hmm. it out, throw it up on on all of our itches, and say, "Yeah, one like week. after me and Amanda move back into our childhood bedrooms." Um... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Casey's already there. Well, no, this isn't, my, this isn't my childhood bedroom. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my childhood bedroom my... was three houses ago. <laughs> my childhood bedroom is technically not the one. It's my teenage bedroom, and it really will be my teenage bedroom. I will be back to the same like folding table for a desk <laughs> <laughs> um with the addition of a lizard though that's pretty cool um, well, yeah, no, but it, yeah it's it's significantly better because it has a lizard <laughs> it has significantly better um uh, speaking of short jam- game jams though i already talked to alex about um the fact that we should collaborate on like a really short pcg like art mm-hmm. piece uh i still want that on the table i think that would be fun um definitely that definitely like a short game jam it's nice to have this is why i switch between big thick sketchbooks and the small thin sketchbooks it's good to get like a win like mm-hmm. i finished the sketchbook in a month wow never mind the previous one that took me three months or four months yeah. but this no, sketchbook I, I finished I very, in a month. I very much like that idea i think even mm-hmm. even if it is just the three of us that do it like mm-hmm. us together we can make a real good game with no sound yeah. <laughs> freesound.org uh, a, ga- a game with no music let me rephrase well, we make a, a we make a no we make a bleep bloop like a little chip toony chip tune yeah, yeah we do p we're doing pcg i have a uh, various code bases for pcg music from when i took that class yeah <laughs> it's like just chuck up. those in there put some chip yeah. tunes in it <laughs> yeah okay Let's see. We could do it. Good. We are coming up on an hour and twenty minutes of stuff. Yes, with like will be forty cut out. minutes. Forty of... of those. Twenty of those minutes are Avatar. Twenty of those minutes are World of Warcraft. <laughs> no, no, no. I think twenty minutes. Twenty. Twenty combined is Avatar and World of Warcraft. And you I go into the bathroom. I've, I've been. I've got two monitors, and I've been watching the numbers. Has it? We did not talk about Avatar for twenty we, minutes. We talked about Avatar for twenty minutes. No, we talked about Avatar for ten minutes regardless i think <laughs> that we can move on and talk yeah. about the website the trailer and the showcase for yes Mobius. let's yes. let us move we forward have a, to the showcase we have a domain now so we could put a link to it i don't know if it will lead anywhere right now it might just be a landing page uh, uh i'm gonna we not, got... i'm gonna not put a link in uh this well week. i'm gonna say it right now so people well, you if you want to go to it if you want to go to that landing page go for it there will not be a link right. in the description of the podcast until next time when there's some of that website actually exists right it'll forward you to the itch page which will be in the description yes so um, you can but cut we out the do man. own the domain name indieboids.com and the when the website for the game exists as which is part of the 172 process is to make a website for our game it will be the address indieboids.com forward slash mobius <laughs> the fact that we have to create a website a trailer and do other sort of uh, showcase prep was also part of our decision to change our showcase uh, scope um mm. we've got a little bit of like art tasks to do in terms of like making um things for the website for twitter which we've made sure the twitter is a little more active in the last week or two um that's been sort of in the art pipeline uh so by the way check us out on twitter at mobius underscore game capital m (laughs) mobius capital g game i think i think you can find it searching for it uh without the caps as long as you put the underscore in yeah Mm -hmm. yeah so mobius underscore game on twitter we've got a little bit of process work on there links to the podcast and the itch um page um and for the showcase um it's like when the showcase was in person there was going to be a requirement for a game banner that we designed and had printed to display at our booth. Um, and the equivalent of that, I think, is uh, part of the website having, you know, designed content for the website. Um, so I think it'll be pretty cool. I think we're going to be work- working on repurposing assets in the game as much as possible. Um, yeah. But I think there will the be some new being, stuff created. Um, being a page in the journal. Yeah, ooh. So we, we can, can, we our, can like, chase that train of thought. Because yeah. <laughs> we have a we have a loose storyboard for the trailer. I think that's going to be mm-hmm. an Alex and I cut it together in a weekend kind of task. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And by Alex and I cut it together, I mean Alex, who knows how to video edit, shows me how to cut it together <laughs> over a weekend so I can feel like I've yes, contributed. I've, I've been practicing my, uh, my quick cuts. <laughs> yeah, I know, but like, because Kelly gave us that st- that storyboard, and I think that's pretty much all we need. We just need to clean it up, get the footage in, get the cuts in, and make it feel all trailery, and then 
will be sent And then I can out. finally mooch off of all the views we're getting on itch and yeah. bring them over to my YouTube, <laughs> YouTube uh, channel <laughs> where they'll find this podcast again. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It works. But I think <laughs> the circle of, it... SE, of SEO. Yeah. There's an there's an additional task, I think, on there too that's like just a general gameplay video, but that's I mm-hmm. think less showcase prep and more final turn in prep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that's the, not really something that we would have like give to in the an world. actual yeah game thing yeah it would be trailer and website Mm -hmm. and obviously the idea of the indie boys website it's already built to be modular it could have multiple projects it could have that it'll could it will probably have whatever a a tab for whatever that game jam game ends Mm -hmm. up being if yeah that's that's exactly what i was thinking is that we have indieboids.com if we continue and we make another game we release it under that same banner and we put it on the same top level domain give it its own website its yeah. own trailer yeah I, I i'll say ifs for the second game i say will i'm gonna say wills for the game jam game i think it will be mm-hmm. easy to find a week in june where at least like three of us can make something mm-hmm. yeah so i think that will be good i think so i'm, I'm looking forward to it mm-hmm. and we don't even need to like i think it'd be good to find a game jam and do it like a prompted like, one yeah yeah but, but we, we don't, don't even need to. to do that we could just yeah. say we're taking this week to make a game yeah i think the the point about the prompts for game jams is so that they can guide your thinking a little bit because Mm -hmm. it's meant to be done in such a short frame of frame of time yeah they help you with the brainstorming part and sort of like so you can very quickly get into an idea and crack it out Mm -hmm. in a week at the very least itch.io has weekly game jams yeah Mm -hmm. we can can probably i think we'll probably just do one of those because then it's we can go on itch anyways. Yeah. Because then, we, well, right. then we can tag it with that banner, and more people will see it. Yeah, yeah. You got to think about um, that exposure. Yeah. Is right. there anything else we want to say about the website, the trailer, and the showcase um, as part of our next few weeks, as well as polishing the game? I don't think so. I think because it's just it's just additional task work of putting the website together, which feels mm-hmm. kind of like an art uh, art team task, and then. Yeah putting the trailer together which is going to be a tech team task and then now that uh the podcast is off by one week do we want to have our last like uh 172 podcast be after finals week or do we want to have two in a row um i I i'm gonna i'm gonna vote because i made the joke about it earlier i think Mm -hmm. i think it's in the lost recording but um of having like a beach episode next weekend that we record (laughs) next weekend and then doing one week 10 right before the showcase yeah because we're going to do continuation work it doesn't make sense to do one like right after the showcase anymore like if we were mm-hmm. settling that we would be done after the showcase i would say do one after but i think yeah. if because if we did one after the showcase it would be essentially it would be our post-mortem like we'd continue the podcast later after our like one month break yeah no but... i think if we've because we've we've committed to a hard release date and i think enough people are interested in that when we came up with it that we'll have a team to do it with mm-hmm. i think the post-mortem episode should come after the you think that'll come in august in august is the yeah. fourth, fourth so i don't one. yeah so we can do a showcase one and then we can do our little game jam and then maybe we'll talk about those two in an interim episode where we talk about the showcase and that little jam who's sticking around and then go back to a every two week release when we're working in july and august yeah i think that makes sense cool good plan and um, with that, with that roadmap, I don't think there's anything else on our itinerary for. Today. Nope, I'm looking at it right here in front of me, and that's the last. That's the last yeah, one. I think we I think we did it. I think we did we a podcast. Did All right. Wow, we did guys, it. it's been so long. It We're has back. been. We so got long. back on the horse. We fell off that horse, and we watched it ride off into the sunset. <laughs> and, and then new we horses and then come we, by. Well, no, then we fo- <laughs> then we followed it on a mule. <laughs> <laughs> we caught up to it while it was eating some grass. Yeah. Know. Then got back on the horse. And then talked We're about back av- on that horse now. No, no, then we saw it eating some grass and then talked about Avatar for 20 minutes and so walked away. <laughs> chased the horse, talked about World of Warcraft, yes, chased the we, horse again. We did it. Okay. All right. We're ending this podcast we're in firmly now. situated right. on the horse. Yes. Yes. We're back, we're back on that. We're back on that Mustang. Reminds this... me of being 10, learning how to ride horses. <laughs> exactly. This has been the Mobius Development Podcast. I'm Casey. I'm Amanda. I'm Alex. And thank you very much for listening.